Yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, I have a comment I'd like to say. Thank you so much for doing such an excellent job. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Awesome. <laughs> um, I just wanted to piggyback on what you were saying in terms of when I first watched the movie, in the beginning, I wasn't sure if he learned his, I guess, assimilation into the middle class, I guess, society through education. If it, you know, if he learned this transition from, uh, from, you know, if he learned this transition, was it through his education, or how did he learn to transition into this, uh, you know, society yeah. that he was obviously trying to fit in? And number two, one of the uh, things that I saw is that as he would walk to work, he still wanted to hold on to his African American culture, as he would embrace all the neighbors and all the guys yeah. in the he wanted to still embrace that, um, but as he was so, I would say, as he as he was so depleted <laughs> in his energy level from the racism, mm -hmm. it depleted him to the point. It just exhausted him to the point where it just took it just took so much energy from him that he wasn't able to appreciate his own culture anymore. Yes. And that's what racism does. It sucks the life out of you to the point that you can't even celebrate your own anymore. Yeah, it, 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 it takes a lot from you. Uh, the first part of the question, uh, I didn't really establish the fact of how he got that way, but it's pretty much uh, he was told a lot of things. He was told to do well in school, go to college, uh, don't do crime, dress nice, talk properly. And he was raised in a sheltered environment where uh, that was a big deal. And, yeah. Was it a prestigious, I mean, was it an Ivy League school or what school? I mean, <laughs> was, he, was it a Yale or? It, it wasn't Yale, it, 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 it's just Star like, what, what it, it's not like a, uh, it could be like any school. Okay, any be, Because it's, okay. He, he's not like a, a doctor okay. or somebody, you know, he's just like a, a like a, a everyday guy, but he was told in his life that if he uh, talked better, dressed better, went to school, finished school, and did well, uh, he wouldn't have to deal with racism. So I just wanted to show, like, you could go to school, you could do well, you could be anybody, you could be a doctor, lawyer, astronaut, anybody, but racism still could affect you. And I just wanted to show that, but I didn't want to, 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 to place too much of an emphasis on like uh, exactly where he got that from. I just kind of just want to throw you in there and to just uh, get to the real subject matter, which is the effect of racism. But it, it's, it could be anybody in any profession, and it, it could relate to a lot of different um, people and classes. And basically, uh, he just uh, had an idea that racism didn't exist anymore. And uh, we just started the film like that. Uh, very uh, confident guy who thinks in the new age that we live in now that uh, he doesn't have to deal with a lot of the stuff uh, that probably his parents have dealt with in the past. So he had a different outlook on, on things. And when he was going through the motions in the beginning, like there was three parts when he was walking down the block, uh, it wasn't just as, uh, he wasn't trying to embrace his African Americanism. He was just he had a, a great outlook on life. He would embrace anything. Uh, where you know African just any he was just a good-hearted person. You know he'll give to a homeless person. He'll play football with the kids. He'll say hi to the mailman. He, and he's just a, a great, kind-hearted individual that loves life. And racism does suck the life out of you to the point where you can't appreciate those things anymore because it's like. Your mind is so is going uh, so crazy that you really can't really appreciate the little things in life that you might have appreciated if you haven't been going through that stuff because you know it does like a lot of psychological damage to you that you really can't uh, focus on some of the things that you should be focused on. And a lot of people they don't understand the psychological damage that racism uh, has on somebody. They think that everybody should just be able to be happy and smile and have a good life. But some some people, uh, they can't do that. 
and they might go someplace and somebody might say, how come you don't have a smile on your face? How come you're not grinning from hair to hair? It's a nice sunny day outside. But really, that person probably grew up past 20, 30 years of just racism in every direction that he really can't walk with a big smile on his face because he just got harassed by somebody or he just uh, you know, didn't uh, get the thing that he, wa he wanted uh, due to the fact that racism was prevalent. So I just wanted to show the psychological damage of racism. Not, uh, you know, it's a psychological damage and it leads to physical damage. So, and, and a lot of people, they don't understand the little subtleties of that, of, of being rejected or being uh, accused, or, you know. You could be the greatest person in the world and have the greatest of intentions in the world, but if you lived a life and a large uh, part of your life, you had circumstances like that, it will affect you a lot to the a point where, you know, you, you, you might it might affect your, you financially, uh, psychologically, uh, physically, emotionally, and we just wanted to show people the minute effects of racism compounded, then it will equal a great effect on an individual.